Desert Storm, Operation Iraqi Freedom, Total Air Supremacy. This is the complete catalog of U.S. aviation during the Iraq War. Let's start with the fighters and attack aircraft. F-15 Eagle and Strike Eagle. The Kings, the F-15C cleared the skies, scoring the vast majority of air-to-air -air kills without a single loss. The F-15E Mud Hen was the deep striker, using advanced radar to hunt Scud missiles in the western desert at night. F-16 Fighting Falcon. The Viper, the workhorse of the coalition. Small, agile, and numerous, they flew more sorties than any other aircraft, striking everything from Republican Guard tanks to downtown Baghdad command centers. F-A-18 Hornet, the Navy's fist, launching from carriers in the Persian Gulf, they proved their versatility on day one. In a single mission, they could shoot down enemy MiGs and then immediately switch to bombing ground targets. F-14 Tomcat, the legend, the top gun star, while famous for air-to-air, -air, in Iraq it evolved into the Bombcat, using its long-range and precision targeting pods to deliver laser-guided munitions for ground troops. F-111 Aardvark, the tank plinker, the unsung hero of Desert Storm. Using infrared sensors, these swing-wing bombers destroyed over 1,500 Iraqi armored vehicles, earning a reputation as the deadliest tank killers of the war. F-4G Wild Weasel, the radar hunter, the last ride of the Phantom. These specialized jets flew directly into enemy air defenses, firing harm missiles to destroy the radars that threatened the rest of the fleet. 10 Thunderbolt II, the Warthog, the tank buster, built around a massive 30mm Gatling gun, it was feared by Iraqi armor crews. Despite attempts to retire it, it proved indispensable, chewing up convoys on the highway of death. V-8B Harrier II, the jump jet, the Marine Corps' close air support. Operating from amphibious ships, it could hover near the battlefield, delivering ordnance on entrenched infantry positions with terrifying accuracy. F-117 Nighthawk, the ghost, the world's first operational stealth fighter. On the opening night of Desert Storm, it flew directly into the heart of the world's most heavily defended airspace, destroying strategic targets while remaining completely invisible to radar. Now, the bombers and gunships, B-52 Stratofortress, the sledgehammer, the grandfather of the Air Force. It launched cruise missiles from miles away and delivered devastating carpet bombing runs that shattered the morale of the Iraqi Republican Guard. B-1B Lancer, the Bone, a supersonic heavy bomber. It carried the largest payload of guided weapons in the U.S. inventory, using its speed to dash across the desert and loiter over targets for hours. B-2 Spirit, the flying wing, the most expensive aircraft in history. Flying nonstop from Missouri to Iraq, it delivered satellite-guided bombs on hardened bunkers that no other aircraft could touch. A C-130 Spectre, the angel of death, a cargo plane modified into a battleship. Circling at night, it rained down fire from 105mm howitzers and Gatling guns, protecting special forces teams in the cities. Next, the electronic warriors and command. E3 Sentry, the AWACS, the eye in the sky. With its massive rotating radar dish, it managed the complex air traffic of thousands of coalition jets, ensuring total dominance of the airspace. E2 Hawkeye, the Navy's quarterback, the carrier-based eye, it managed the air war over the Persian Gulf, directing Navy fighters to their targets. E-8 J-Stars, the ground watcher, a converted airliner with a radar that looked down, not up, could track moving vehicles on the ground in real time, ensuring no Iraqi convoy could move without being seen. F-111 Raven, the spark vark, an unarmed jammer, it flew with the strike packages, flooding the airwaves with electronic noise to blind Iraqi radars. EA-6B Prowler, the jammer, the Navy's electronic shield. It escorted strike packages, blasting electronic noise to blind enemy surface-to-air missile radars so the fighters could survive. EC-130 Compass Call, the disruptor. It jammed enemy communications, preventing Iraqi commanders from issuing orders to their troops. EC-130J Commando Solo, the voice, a flying radio station used for psychological operations. It broadcasted messages to the Iraqi army and civilians, urging them to surrender and giving instructions on how to stay safe. RC-135 Rivet Joint, the listener, it vacuumed up electronic signals, listening to enemy radio traffic to locate targets for the bombers. RC-12 Guardrail, the Army spy, a modified civilian plane bristling with antennas. 
it intercepted tactical radio and cell phone communications to pinpoint high-value targets for ground commanders. P-3 Orion, the land hunter, originally built to hunt Soviet submarines, in a rocket flew overland, using its powerful sensors and cameras to track insurgents planting IEDs in the desert. U-2 Dragon Lady, the high spy, flying at the edge of space, it used advanced cameras and sensors to provide high-resolution intelligence, continuing the legacy of the Cold War. S-3 Viking, the Hoover, the Navy's utility player, Originally a sub-hunter, in Iraq it hunted patrol boats and served as an aerial tanker for other Navy jets. Now, the drone revolution, MQ-1 Predator, the watcher-turned-killer. Originally a surveillance drone, it was armed with Hellfire missiles during the conflict, changing warfare forever by allowing pilots in Nevada to strike targets in Iraq. MQ-9 Reaper, the hunter, larger and deadlier than the Predator. It became the primary weapon against insurgents, capable of loitering silently for 14 hours before delivering a precision strike. RQ-4 Global Hawk, the High Eye, a massive surveillance drone flying at high altitude. It replaced the U-2 in many roles, scanning vast areas of the desert for enemy movement. Next, the tankers and transports. KC-135 Stratotanker, the flying gas station, the lifeline of the air war. Without these aging tankers circling the borders, the air campaign would have ground to a halt. KC-10 Extender, the big tanker, a converted DC-10 airliner. It carried twice the fuel of the KC-135 and could refuel both Air Force and Navy jets in the same mission. C-130 Hercules, the tactical hauler. Just like in Vietnam, it was essential. It landed on rough dirt strips to resupply forward bases and dropped paratroopers into northern Iraq. MC-130 Combat Talon, the night intruder. A blacked-out Hercules filled with electronic countermeasures. It slipped into enemy territory at treetop level to insert Navy SEALs and Delta Force operators. C-17 Globemaster III, the strategic link, the modern heavy lifter. It could carry an M1 Abrams tank from the U.S. directly to a short runway in Iraq, bridging the gap between strategic and tactical airlift. C-5 Galaxy, the Titan, the largest plane in the U.S. inventory. It moved the massive sheer tonnage of the U.S. Army, carrying helicopters and armor across the ocean to the theater of war. C-2 Greyhound, the mailman, the carrier onboard delivery aircraft. It kept the aircraft carriers supplied with parts, mail, and personnel. Finally, the helicopters, AH-64 Apache, the tank killer, the longbow. It fired the first shots of Desert Storm, destroying radar sites. In the open desert, its Hellfire missiles decimated Iraqi armor columns from beyond visual range. AH-1 Super Cobra, the Snake, the Marine's attack helicopter. Smaller than the Apache but just as aggressive, it provided close protection for Marine convoys pushing toward Baghdad. UH-60 Black Hawk, the modern taxi, replacing the Huey, it became the icon of modern air assault. Fast and durable, it moved troops into battle and evacuated the wounded under fire. MH-60 Pave Hawk, the Rescue Angel, the Air Force's special search and rescue helicopter. Equipped with a refueling probe, it flew deep behind enemy lines to pick up downed pilots. MH-53 Pave Low, the Lead Wolf, a massive special operations helicopter packed with terrain-following radar. It led the Apaches into Iraq on the first night of the war to blind the enemy radar network. CH-53E Super Stallion, the hurricane maker, the largest helicopter in the U.S. military. It carried heavy artillery and light armored vehicles for the Marines. H-46 Sea Knight, the frog, the aging Marine transport. Despite being old, it flew tirelessly, carrying Marines from ships to the shore during the invasion. CH-47 Chinook, the heavy lifter, the tandem rotor beast. It carried artillery, supplies, and vehicles to the most remote forward operating bases in the desert. UH-1N Twin Huey, the veteran. While the army retired the Huey, the Marines flew this twin-engine version into Baghdad, providing vital command and control for the invasion force. UH-58 Kiowa Warrior, the scout, the eyes of the artillery. These brave pilots flew low and slow, marking targets with smoke and lasers for the heavy hitters to destroy. MH-6 Little Bird, the killer egg, the choice of special operations. Small enough to land on a rooftop, it inserted Delta Force operators into tight urban environments during the darkest nights. V-22 Osprey, 
the Transformer. Arriving later in the conflict, this tilt-rotor aircraft combined the speed of a plane with the vertical landing of a helicopter, giving the Marines unprecedented range. From the precision of the laser-guided bomb to the silence of the stealth fighter, the Iraq War redefined air supremacy for the digital age. This is the Wardex.